Good morning, and welcome to the wonderful world of Des Moines. Now just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello. Hi, this is Joe Vanderveer, and I approve this message. <laughs> Don't start that. <laughs> <laughs> it's politic commercial time. Oh, it's, if it hasn't started, it'll be here soon enough. And we don't watch a lot of radio TV, so yeah, and, we're, and we have YouTube with no commercials, yeah. so and if, I don't really know. And I'll tell you what, a lot of times you can get that free for for like a month or maybe not. Maybe it's only like two or three weeks. Do that. <laughs> that way you don't have to listen. You don't have to listen to unless you like listening to those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. we do not. Yeah, we don't. We don't want to listen to that. Um, but uh, so <laughs> here I am tonight. Still battling my allergy some, but I've been feeling a little better today. I uh, got some new medication at the drugstore that the kind you have to get behind the counter. So I think it works a little better. Oh, there's a gnat. It is. Um, so I just wanted to touch base and talk with everyone. Bye. Um, I thought I'd touch on a question that actually I got it a while ago, but I don't know. For some reason, I keep pushing it back on the list because I guess I don't really have a a clear cut answer for it. Um, someone asked what Craig's IQ is. Um, and I guess I wouldn't have thought of it again, but I had a comment. Um, someone commented that Craig obviously, and I'll put it a little nicer than they did, has uh, cognitive disabilities. And why don't I ever talk about that? Um, am I ashamed of that? And no, I'm not ashamed of that. It just doesn't matter to me. Uh, to me, the two things go hand in hand with Craig. And I honestly don't ever think of the fact that Craig has cognitive disabilities or that he doesn't function as someone that's his age level because it doesn't matter. Um, we've, Craig, we've, Craig's grown up with us as his parents and that's all we've ever known. And we just work around everything. And actually, um, I guess his childish manner is endearing to us and uh, allows us to enjoy life in a whole nother way than other people do. Um, as far as IQ, we did have Craig, uh, when Craig graduated, and you'll find out if you have children uh, when they turn 18, uh, and you wanna sign up for services for them, you have to get them evaluated by a psychiatrist. So. I did take Craig to a psychiatrist uh, when he turned 18 and it actually was, <laughs> it was kind of funny because that's the first time I'd ever taken Craig uh, to see a psychiatrist or any kind of a therapist. So uh, we came to Des Moines, we lived in Knoxville then and we walked into his office and he introduced himself and Craig said, so you're a psychiatrist? And he's like, yes, I am. And Craig walked over to the couch and laid down. <laughs> We were just all laughing. It was so funny. <laughs> um, so it all started in the womb. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he said it because after at a, a point they have you leave and they do the IQ test. However, they do it. Um, but at that point, at the end of the appointment, uh, Craig was diagnosed as mild. Uh, intellectual disabilities. That's the word I've been trying to find. Um, and so he qualified to get services because I don't know if it's that way anymore, but um, at that time and in Iowa, you do not qualify for services because you have autism. You only qualified for services uh, at that point in time anyway, if you had an intellectual disability and Craig definitely qualified. Uh, we do, we have to have that reevaluated, I think every five years, uh, just to make sure that nothing, nothing has changed. We had that appointment, not, it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it's probably been longer ago um, than I think. And actually this question made me think of that appointment. Uh, we took him to Pella to like, it's a child psychology associates, if I remember right. It was, it's in a building, um, by itself and that's what they do. And I was was told that that appointment was going to last like four to five hours and we would drop Craig off. And we went into the office and I'll never for, forget the uh, psychologist we saw was a young man. I mean, 
thing. Looked like he was right out of college. He did. At, and actually he didn't even look that old. Well, he seemed like he'd never seen someone with autism. Like he just seemed very taken aback by Craig and like he didn't know what to do with it. So we left Craig there and you know, I've never thought about this before, but what was it like for Craig for us just to leave him there with a total stranger like that um, to do tests? But we left with the impression that we were going to have to find some stuff to do. And in fact, they called us back. I don't even know if it was an hour. No, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, they called us back. It happened to be near, was Walmart there at that time? Yep. Something. I know yeah, we, we went, went somewhere nearby. And they called us back and um, brought Craig out and gave us the diagnosis, which was the same as before. And honestly, I didn't think a lot about why it was short. But just last night, I was thinking... I wonder if after we left, like, did Craig get upset? Did he not know what to do with Craig? So, you know, he just cut the appointment short. I really have no idea. And at the time I didn't even ask any questions. Uh, I guess I was actually relieved that we didn't have to spend four to five hours getting Craig reevaluated. Uh, but now I do wonder. And I wonder what it was like for Craig to be left there with someone who seemed like he had no idea what to do with Craig. Um, I do kind of remember the first time I took him that the psychiatrist had some puzzles or something before I left the room he was trying to get Craig to do. Uh, but I have no idea what they asked them. I'm assuming that the uh, IQ test is done a lot in that way with like puzzles. And um, I think I remember his notes. He asked Craig a question and uh, Craig didn't have a response or he answered I don't know to a lot of things or something like that. Honestly, I don't know how um, accurate IQ tests can be with people with autism because of the communication barrier, especially with people that they don't know. Um, but I do believe Craig has intellectual disabilities. I, if you know Craig, you know he doesn't, he doesn't act like a 30-year-old man and he doesn't have the capabilities of a 30-year-old man. Thank goodness a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, honestly. He's <laughs> probably a lot yeah. easier to deal with than... Yeah, think how easy it is to go through life if you've got the mind of a child mm -hmm. and the eyes of a child mm -hmm. you know what he looks at and everything he doesn't wor he doesn't worry about the same things we've said that numerous yeah we've times. talked and about that really kind of that in a way answered this question already mm -hmm. that of anybody watches it it's it's odd that that you ask the question why don't we address it it's addressed all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and right. most of the viewers, I'm assuming this person hasn't watched many I, of his videos. I think videos. that it was on a short. And yeah. honestly, a lot of the negative comments come on the shorts. They watch a 60 minute video and make a big assumption. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I said one time, it was years ago in a Bible study, I said, how cool is it, it that, that you end up, you have a child, that you end up having your little boy with you your entire life that's not a that's not a burden you get to have somebody that shows and craig and i disagree and you know all the time <laughs> but you get to have somebody that that reminds you what life is like as a child all the time and that's a, that's kind of a great thing to have that you you see that the world really should just be all bacon cheeseburgers and chicken strips yeah <laughs> you know it should be a lot yeah. more simple yeah we, we shouldn't have to we shouldn't have to fight over you know the losing weight and everything it's just because that doesn't that's not fun mm -hmm. so and that and he's in that stage he just he wants to have fun he gets angry about stuff and everything just like it like a tantrum you know he'll get upset about mm -hmm. his computer or stuff like that but that's just that's just how it is and it's yeah. So, you know, I'll, you know, late, late in my life, you know, I'll still have a little boy around. And that's pretty special. Sorry. That's okay. I'm not crying because I'm sad. <laughs> um, so I didn't, I'm really, I'm, I really didn't talk about the comment because I was complaining about it. Um, I only brought it up because or the whole thing up because I know that it's something that uh, many parents are going to have to to go through when their child turns 18. Um, you'll have to get them evaluated if you want them to have services, which uh, definitely get the services because they have helped us and Craig so much. And I mean, check into your 
into your your state as to how far in advance. I know we did it. Yeah, we did it when Craig turned 18. Yeah, and they said we actually should have had it done earlier and had it set up to where like almost on his birthday, he would have got the evaluation and that's only to get the services but set up and everything. Honestly, like I think that, that the, the lady, at, the first lady I talked to was an older lady probably close to retirement but she actually lectured me for not having craig signed up uh before he was 18 and she's yeah. like well what how is he going to get services how is he going to go to dayhab who's going to pay for that and i'm like well he's not going to be leaving school when he turns 18 he's still he's going to the extended program so yeah um, that was already set up right we won't have to worry about that and in fact it didn't make any difference yeah we and uh maybe it takes longer now but she's yeah. like well that can take a quite a while to for all that to go through honestly the whole process was very quick i was impressed at uh the speed that it went i don't know since COVID, i think everything's probably slower so i couldn't promise you that but yeah. for it's, our experience it's good, to, it's good to check into i mean when your mm -hmm. child yeah, you might as well usually ask like and find out. Usually like their 17th birthday is a, is a time to maybe mm -hmm. start to ask ask your uh, your uh, health team about that as to how much of, how right. much of a problem it'll be. Yeah, because it never hurts to ask. Yep. Um, and the services are very valuable. Um, I, I credit a lot of it for how far Craig's come. I mean, they have led us. They've taught us how to do things. Um, so definitely uh, check into that. And that's something also guardianship. Uh, we got guardianship for Craig when he turned 18, which also was not a difficult process for us. Yep. Um, it is in I, some states. Yeah, like. because yeah, we watched Fathering Autism and their daughter recently turned 18 and they had to actually go to court. We never had to go to court. Um, no. Our lawyer actually went and talked to the judge for us and got it all set up. And a friend of mine actually told me she has two sons that um they don't they're not on the spectrum but they have other disabilities but she actually didn't even have to get a lawyer she just did it through the courthouse so and i don't know how that works um but she didn't have to pay anything to set up guardianship um, yeah. we have to pay a fee every year which is no big deal um it's definitely good to have that protection in place uh those are just things that uh, you'll need to do uh, when your child becomes an adult and I think that's all I have to say on that before this gets too long. Um, I had a couple of just more uh, fun personal questions. Someone did ask me, uh, should you dye the water in the hummingbird feeder red? No, no, don't put anything in it. Usually hummingbird feeders, not all of them, but they're usually red. They've got some red on them and that's what the that's what hummingbirds recognize when they're up flying around if they're trying to expand their zone. They look for red flowers. Mm -hmm. They will go to other flowers, but red is their preference. We really so. need to find a link to that lady that has all those hummingbirds. And she makes hummingbird feeders out of everything, oh, out of yeah. two liter bottles and mm -hmm. peanut butter jars. Yeah, peanut butter jars is her big And thing. it's really a fun channel to watch. Um, yeah, she's a, she's a bit eccentric and yeah. that's what makes it fun to watch. Yeah. And, but she makes all sorts of battery pat battery powered uh bubblers mm -hmm. that the hummingbirds supposedly like and i need to i need to get something like that i'd like to do something like that i think livy would like that yeah. project well, especially next week it's supposed to be in the hundreds mm -hmm. oh, yeah you know the uh, heat, the heat yes. bubble is getting to iowa finally now yeah so yeah i've got i've got one uh bird bath on the deck i'll make sure i keep it filled and nancy was saying we should maybe move one of the other ones i've got i think another, we should get another bird bath we, well we got there. aluminum one from mm -hmm. our old house. Oh, I didn't know we still had that. Yep, it's down around the back side of the hot tub. So I could go ahead and get that cleaned up and get that up there. Unfortunately, the stupid raccoons are gonna pull it over. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Night. They're gonna be thirsty too. <laughs> yeah. We'll put a, some water on the ground for them. Well, there's there's a dog bowl out there. I yeah. think they drink out of it because I see the dogs once in a while, they'll go over there. We keep a bottle a thing right by the door. So if they go out in the morning and haven't drank anything, they come up thirsty they can get a drink right there mm -hmm. and i see them every morning when they come back up just sniffing around that bowl and everything <laughs> so i know there i know there's been somebody else there yeah and joe uh he also did some videos today with his birds and i don't know did you i haven't watched them are they the cuttings too or just the birds no no i just did i just thought of it you know when i was going to go do that i thought oh, i better i better film it 
I'll get scolded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe yeah. went a little crazy with the boreal feeders. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> we might we be considered it. the crazy bird people, but yeah. we don't care. <laughs> no, I had a lot of feeders up and I I had whittled them down for the yeah. summer, but the birds are just coming in in force right now. I And I mentioned, I think it's because a lot of people have slowed down on feeding them. And I don't know if they just having trouble finding as much food in the wild. You know, we did have a real dry stretch there. That does affect a lot of, of stuff that they eat. So the, the birds are happy I'm putting all that out. Yeah, and we don't have as much place to put bird feeders now because part yeah. of the deck is gone with yeah. the sunroom. So they're a little more crowded together, but yeah, we don't makes, care. It's just it fun. Worse. It's fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked, they asked us of both of us, but I have absolutely almost zero interest in sports. Once in a while, I'll watch college basketball if the Cyclones are playing. But they wanted to know, do we like NFL, NBA, or Major League Baseball? Well, I mean, I've followed all of them, of course. Uh, Red-blooded American male, you know, that's just kind of how, how I was born and raised. We watched a lot of stuff and everything. NFL, uh, I'm a lifelong Indianapolis Colts fan. I was a, I was a Colts fan. I was, I'm old enough, I, I can remember watching a few games with Johnny Unitas uh, through the, if you're a Colts fan, you'll know, through the, the Burt Jones era and, and when he got hurt and how that affected him. They went years without a decent quarterback. I mean, years without one. There's a whole and, other channel here. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, picking up Peyton Manning, you know, you, the greatest thinker that's ever played the game. So, um, yeah, so Colts all the way. Uh, NBA, I don't watch much NBA anymore. Uh, like it or not, it's the the politics of the NBA just kind of turned me off. And the, the NBA, the 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 free agency got to where all these players started wanting to get together and make power teams instead of supporting a team, you know, that they got drafted by. Mm -hmm. So I have, and the and the NFL is starting to get a little bit that way too. So I really lost interest, but for the years I was, I was a Celtic fan. You know, I was Larry Bird, you know, the greatest, uh, the greatest talker the game has ever known, besides being one of the greatest shooters. I mean, he was an ice man. He, you get him mad, and that was the worst thing he could do. And uh, baseball, uh, I was a Dodger fan. I, I grew up with, with uh, the Fab, uh, they called him the Fab Four, who was, let's see if I can still remember him. Steve, Steve Garvey, uh, Bill Russell, Davey Lopes, and Ron Say at third base. Uh, took him around there. And yeah, saw a few uh, uh, World Series wins in my day, not in person, but so yeah. And baseball, I, I don't mind watching it, but I'm old enough, baseball puts me to sleep anymore. When I watch it's it on always TV. put me to sleep. <laughs> so, it's it's hard to watch. It seems you know, to last forever. When it's when it's towards the end and it's exciting, I can watch it. But just day in day out, I just I just can't watch baseball that much. I grew up in a house with a dad that hated sports. Oh yeah. He he came over here from Germany. I know I've mentioned that when he was sixteen. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but he has had no interest in sports. He didn't want it on the TV. And you know, it's weird because having grown up with that, it almost get like when the it comes on the TV, I almost have this like irritation of an irritated feeling. I think it's just ingrained into me because my dad was like, turn that over like as soon as it came on. So, um, but I think my sisters watched some sports. So I don't know, maybe it didn't have that effect on all of us. Um, and one last question. Um, someone asked, what are some Netflix shows that we've enjoyed? And I actually, when I went to answer her question, I couldn't remember what we watched on what platform. There's so many platforms now. Um, but we really liked Ozark. And what was the other one you mentioned? You was on. Oh, uh, you, yeah. The, we never did watch the final season yeah, the all the way through. last season just it wasn't. Just got, it just got weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't watch that. And they mentioned they watched Dead to Me, which I did watch the first season. Um, yeah, I never got I've back to watching the other that, ones. I really enjoyed, we watched Call the Midwife, but I never watched the last, I think, two, at least the last two seasons. Uh, mainly because the people I like kept leaving the show and I kind of lost interest, but um, maybe someday I'll go back and watch that. I'm sure there have been many more. I, I think that's where, 
Oh, the... There's one where all the... It, it was a Japanese show they brought in that had... It was like a game show, and if you didn't make it, you died. Oh, yeah, we did what? Um, oh, yikes. I can't remember that. Yeah, I, I really like, can't remember what that was called anymore. But if you watched it, you know what we're talking. Games. Yeah, Squid just, Games. And I didn't and think of it. I, I was scrolling. Through. The one where the girl played poker, not poker. Chess. Oh, something. The Queen's Gambit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That was yeah. a good one too. I liked that mm -hmm. one. It was kind of. Um, it got kind of weird. I guess you. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, but I mean, I enjoyed it. Um, we like to watch shows, <laughs> uh, but we watch a lot of platforms, so it, it gets confusing which one, and if it's still on the platform, we watched it. But I mentioned to her, one of my very favorite shows I've watched on Netflix is Derek. And if you haven't watched Derek, um, it has the guy from, I can't think of his name right now, but he was from the British office. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, his name's on the tip of my tongue. But that show is really good. It's about a, um, a guy and he has uh, mental disabilities. Um, he's so cute. Ricky, Ricky Gervais. Gervais. Yes, he plays that. Uh, Ricky this Gervais. guy that lives yeah. in a nursing home. Um, he's just very cute, and it's just so wholesome, and it just makes you feel happy to watch it. Um, so I guess I'd really recommend you watch that yeah. if, if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I think you'll like it. And with that, we better move on yep. to the rest of the video yep. because not everyone enjoys this part of the video. Um, I guess I'm just going to ask this question now. Would you rather we make this part of the video a separate video or leave it, leave everything together? Because I know different people come here to watch for different reasons. We have parents that come here and family members that enjoy it, but we also have people on the spectrum and I don't know how much they enjoy the beginning of the videos, but um, just leave a comment, your opinion, and I'll see what the overall majority is. I just like to get to know everyone. Yeah, it's easy to skip too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and you could always skip you on past it. On it. Your, your phone yes. or on your TV and just slide across. Mm -hmm. to... Yeah, if you don't want to watch that and it's portion also, of you the might video. Be able to, you might be able to put a timer on the, the beginning so that if you don't like this part, skip yeah. to Well, you can make chapters. X. I just need to look into it further. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things about YouTube I'm still learning. Yeah, if you, if you did that and just had two chapters, this and the rest of the video. Yeah. And then it that right. helped, but um, either way, skip a part, skip ahead yeah. till it's solved. Yeah. Um, so today, Craig and I went out and we ate a bebops. That's in the film. I kind of decided bebops just isn't for me, um, <laughs> but you'll see the review. Craig liked it, of course. Um, we visited a little uh, Mexican cake shop that's here in Des Moines. I didn't get a lot of video of that. It's just a very small shop, but we will be having those cakes tomorrow. Tomorrow, actually, Stephanie's birthday was Thursday. Um, but we're celebrating tomorrow with Stephanie and Dusty and the girls and Bennett and Haley. So we'll try and get some of that on video, And but I'll show you the cakes in today's video. If you're ever in Des Moines, that's a must stop. You have to check out that little bakery because those little cakes are amazing. Um, with that, we'll go on to the rest of the video, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Peace. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And today, we're eating lunch at Bebop's, get a package at the post office, and get the mini cakes. Yeah. We're getting the little Mexican cakes at, I can't remember, is it called La Me Bakery? We'll let you know when we get there. Uh, Stephanie's birthday was on Thursday, and we're celebrating tomorrow with the family, right, Craig? Right. All right, let's go. All right, let's see if we have any packages today. Oh, we have some letters. Eighteen. Oh, and a couple of packages, all right. We're gonna have a mail time, Craig. We need a minute to look at the menu. We've ordered our food. 
And I like this bee box because it has a place to sit in it. Uh, the bee box by our house does not. This bee box is on. This bee box is on Fleur Drive. Craig, how many years did you say it's been since we've been to bee Bops? Nine. Nine years. I don't know why it's been so long, but I'm anxious to try it again. Part of the reason it's been so long is the bee Bops closest to us. There's only outdoor seating and there's many reasons I don't like to eat outside, including bugs, the hot, the heat, wind. So I'm just more of an indoorsy person and so is Craig. And here's a look at our receipt. It costs us about $10 a person. That's not bad by today's standards. And Craig, one of our viewers wants to know, what is your all-time favorite drink? Bib Zero. Looks like our food has arrived. I may bring it in a Bebop's bag. And here's a look at Craig's burger. Nice and fresh. Um, he got a bacon cheeseburger, of course. Uh, the fries are the nice skinny kind, and they are super hot. Craig, how's your burger? Good. And I decided to try the tenderloin here because I always am searching for a good one. This one does not look like a normal tenderloin I'm used to. Not sure how I'm going to feel about this, but we'll see. So the pork tenderloin was not for me. I just did not like it. I'm going to take it home for Joe. I think he'll be okay with it. Can't find the kind of pork tenderloins I like anymore. I like them pounded very thin and coated with cracker. Um, so many are going to the thicker cut, and they're coated in like cornmeal. This was not anything like I've ever seen on a tenderloin before. A lot of people probably like it. It just wasn't for me. So I'm trying the cheeseburger, which is rather large, actually. Um, it's $5, but it is a lot bigger than like a McDonald's cheeseburger. All right, so the burger, the cheeseburger is actually very good. It's charbroiled, has a great flavor, has nice crispy edges. Reminds me a lot of the Hardee's burgers, how they used to be when I used to work there a long time ago. But I do like the burger. Craig, have you ever seen all real monsters? Yup. Has the voices like Charlie Yadner, Christy Cognon, Greg Berger, Tim Curry, Jim Belushi. Jim Belushi? Yeah. Well, what's that about? I I know it's what... about a trio of monsters who attends a monster school to scare people away. What year did that come out? Nineteen ninety five. It wasn't nineteen ninety four. I'm not sure. I remember seeing it. I can picture what the monster looks like. Hold doesn't isn't there one that holds the eyeball on top of his head or something? Yeah. Top point he holds the eyeballs with his hands. <clears throat> Craig, can you give me a review of Bebop's? Bebop is the best burger place. The bacon cheeseburger tastes good. Pardon me. Pardon me. Okay. The waitress seems nice. I give it two thumbs up, five stars, and a Craig Vanver silver approval. Which do you like better, Bebop's or Burger King? Burger King. Yeah, me too. All right, since we're over here, we're right across from this new coffee shop it's been here a while but i just don't make it over very much it's called i don't know how you pronounce that we're gonna see what it's like hi oh it's very cute inside Be a great place to hang out we're gonna stop in and Craig's getting a scoop of ice cream and I'm getting this mango lassi. Which eating donuts for? And I'm going to have a donut because I really didn't eat much of my lunch and I'm hungry. <laughs> Got the mango lassi, which has mango yogurt um, and it has cardamom in it so I'm anxious to try it I've never had anything like this and I like to try new things and I got this coconut top donut 
It's kind of like a smoothie. I like the taste of the cardamom myself. What do you think? Well, it tastes like mangoes to me. You like it? Not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know if I've ever had cardamom, or if I did, I didn't know it, but I love that taste. The donut is quite dry. <laughs> Probably need some coffee with that. I mean, the flavor's okay. The drink's where yeah, it's at, really. The are over there. We're still waiting on Craig's ice cream. I'll give you a little better look at the menu. I think while I'm here, I'm going to try the masala coffee. I feel kind of bad for this place because they opened not all that long ago. And ever since they opened, I feel like Fleur has been under heavy construction. And I feel like a lot of people probably don't like to come over here on this side because of the construction. It's getting a little better. Maybe also look at their coffee. It's kind of cool. shop. I hope more people come and uh, check it out. Enjoy it. They also have some shirts. How's your ice cream, Craig? Good. It's a very little cone, but that's good because that's all Craig really needed. Um, I almost think maybe they make it here. And this is the Mesala coffee with some cream in it. It has spices like cinnamon and cardamom. It's very good, kind of like chai spices and coffee. I like it. It's very nice. And this is the Mikasa cake shop. And wonderful treats are inside that building. Here's a look at our little cakes that we are going to enjoy on Stephanie's birthday celebration tomorrow. And the flavors you're looking at are lemon, um, there's a coconut, strawberry, chocolate, chocolate raspberry, uh, red velvet, and a pina colada. It's mail time. No? Yes, sign here. Dear Craig, Artisan One Day Review, we love the videos, keep up the great work, and they are so fun and enjoyable to watch, and I wish I could send them for them. in this letter. I apologize for that you and your mom are, you are so cool to watch, and thank you for always recycling, helping the earth. Um, I appreciate that I also wanted to say that the me and you knew have a lot in common. We like some of the same things. Sincerely, Reese W. P.S. Will you still also subscribe my, my, to my YouTube channel? Also, can I please have a thank you card? Yes, you can. Reese sent us some pictures. Reese W., that's his name. This is my address for the thank you card. Don't read the address, though. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Money! Yeah, he sent us some money. You can take that with us on vacation, Craig. We did? Yeah, you can buy yourself. Buy something when we're on vacation. Thank How about you, that? Reese. That was very nice. And, yes, we will check out your YouTube channel. It's called Reese Knievel Williams 500. Hi, Craig and family. This bracelet is for your mother. My family and I watch your videos all the time. Keep up the awesome work, Craig. And keep on having a great day. Let me see. Oh, that's so pretty. Thank you so much. There's a cross on it, too. Oh, I'm not holding it up high enough. 
It's very pretty. Wow, Berenstain Bears and Curious George. Oh, we got some new books to read. It looks like one of them has some stickers in it, too. Bernstein Bears, I think I saw some stickers in the front. Did you see them? Yep. Okay. We're going to have to read on Thanksgiving. Oh, is that a Thanksgiving book? Yep. Okay. We need to have a section for holiday books. What's the one for Curious George called? Curious George and the Pizza Party. I'll show these more at the end of the video so we can get a better look. A gift for you. Dear Craig, I hope you enjoy your muse book from Justin, from Justin Glenn. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, sounds very nice, Justin. Thank you so much. Oh, Corduroy good, another day. book. You turned it around so we can see it. Oh, nice. You can read that, too, for the channel. Yeah. That will be especially good for our story channel, too. Have you ever read Corduroy? Yeah, the book. Have We went to see the Corduroy movie, didn't we? Yeah. No. Was that Corduroy? No, I'm thinking of Paddington Bear. Paddington Bear. Was there a show called Corduroy, though? Yeah, from the 1990s. Yeah, I remember that show. Kirsten. Thank you, Reese, Justin, and Kirsten. Thank you so much. Those are such sweet gifts. Yep. I can't wait to hear Craig read the books. Yep. So Craig has been awaiting Stephanie's answer of what she wants tomorrow for her birthday lunch. And it's between Mexican and Scornavaca's pizza place. Are you ready for the answer? Ready. She said Scornavaca's. Good. <laughs> are you happy about that? Yep. What if she said Mexican? What? Would you have been okay if she said Mexican? No. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay, here's a joke for you. Okay. How do you catch a unique rabbit? How? Unique up on it. <laughs> How do you catch a tame rabbit? How? Tame way. Unique <laughs> up on it. <laughs> That's from one of our viewers. Three days are left on our Florida calendar. 27. 27 more days. What? What was the picture you took down today? Do you remember? The Cheshire Cat. Ah. Won't be long now. This book is called When Charlie Met Emma. When Charlie Met Emma. Written by Amy Webb. Illustrated by Merle Ladarn. Narrated by Amy Poehler. Charlie liked to do lots of different things. Sometimes, Charlie liked to be loud and wild. Roar. He liked to climb and swing and run with his friends. But Charlie also liked to be quiet. He liked to sit and think and draw by himself. This made Charlie feel different. But whenever Charlie felt different, he remembered what his mother taught him. Different isn't weird, sad, bad, or strange. Different is different. And different is okay. One day, Charlie and his mother went to the park and he saw someone even more different than he was. Charlie stopped and stared. He saw a girl without any hands. And she was in a wheelchair. He rubbed his eyes and looked again. Yup, still no hands. What happened? Where did her hands go? Maybe some aliens came from outer space and took his hands with him. Or maybe a monster had to bend them up. Or maybe her hands were just lost. Charlie had such strange feeling inside his stomach. Before he knew what was happening, he heard himself asking in not, not so quiet voice. Does she look so weird, Mommy? Charlie looked up and noticed that his mom's face looked weird too. Charlie looked at the girl and saw that she looked sad. Now Charlie's soft stomach started to hurt. Charlie's mom knelt down to him next to Charlie. Sweetie, it's not nice to call people weird. Weird is a rude word. Rude words can hurt people's feelings. She's not weird. She's different. Do you remember what I taught you about being different? Chai remembered. Different isn't weird, sad, bad, or strange. Different is different. And different is okay. But was different okay? Maybe this girl was too different. 
Maybe this girl was strange. You should introduce yourself, Charlie's mom said. I bet she likes making new friends, too. Hi, I'm Charlie. What's your name? I'm Emma, the girl said, and this is my sister, Chloe. I'm sorry, I said you look weird, said Charlie. My mommy said that's a mean word. That's right, Emma said. I also don't like when, like it when people don't parents stare and laugh or whisper about me. But it's okay you have, if you have questions, Emma said. Charlie smiled. He did have questions, lots of them. Why don't you have any hands, he asked. And why do you have that chair? Emma sat up straight and smiled. I was born this way. I have limbs differences. That means my arms and legs are different. I can't walk, so I use this wheelchair. I drive it all by myself. Wow, Sir Charlie said. You really are different. Yep, said Emma. I am. Lots of people are different. Some people can hear or speak and need to use their hands, hands to communicate. Some people need special machines to help them walk or breathe. Some people can't see because they're blind and special canes to get around. All of us are different sizes, shapes, and colors. We're all different in one way or another. Do you ever feel different, Charlie? Charlie thought for a second and then told them all about how he sometimes liked to run and play and shout like his friends. And sometimes like to sit and think and draw. Yeah, said Chloe. Some people are different on the outside and side, and some people are different on the outside. But we're all different. We are all different, Charlie repeated. And different is okay. That's right, Emma said. I am a little different than you, but I'm a lot the same too. You are, said Charlie. How? I like to play on the back playground, said Emma. Me too. I like to swing, said Emma. Me too. I even like to play tag with my friends. Wow, said Charlie. Me too. Then Charlie said, my favorite thing in the whole world is drawing. I really like to draw. With a big smile on her face, Emma grabbed a pencil at her foot and wrote something on Charlie's notebook. Soon it was time for Charlie and his mom to go home. Goodbye, Emma. Goodbye, Chloe. Let's play again soon. Emma and Chloe yelled back, Goodbye, Charlie. As Charlie's mom walked home, Charlie said, Mom, I made a new friend today. My friend Emma is different than me. But different isn't weird, sad, bad, or strange. Different is just different. And guess what? I think different is great. The end. And this is Craggy Virus saying, Keep on having a great day, and we'll see you real soon.